Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in welcoming to the gathering of Eagle Stage, Chief Master Sergeant Calvin Markham. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So that summed it pretty much all, so thank you. <laughs> hey, so it's, uh, it's quite an honor to be here, and, and I'm very, very humbled, and uh, I'm very, very intimidated, because if you look at the list of uh, eagles you have this week, um, I am by far, uh, well, I always say I have the lowest IQ in any room I walk into, but uh, I am completely honored to be here with uh, these gentlemen to be a part of this, and uh, man, I hope I don't disappoint you. So, if I could get all the ACSC students to stand up, please. You are future leaders. Lead well or don't lead. And good luck in your future endures. Please sit down. Hey, so October 2001, you got, a, you got a great group of people today. So, um, General Charlie Holland, the first U.S. Air Force, the only U.S. Air Force uh, commander of U.S. Special Operations Command during 9-11. He's here with us today. Uh, you have um, Colonel Darginio, who led the talons, the combat talons, into Operation Gecko and Operation Rhino, taking a huge bite out of the Taliban forces. And then you have a very close, in soft operations, you find yourself that you are connected in many, many ways with, with people that you didn't know. Um, you may have not known them during the operation. You may have not known them after the operation. But man, they're going to be a part of your heart. So we have uh, Chief Tabor in here from Task Force 160th that uh, led some great men. And I'm not going to steal any of their stories. but. Man, today you got a great lineup, and uh, to kick this off, uh, again, I feel very intimidated by it because, um, man, just some awesome, awesome people to be around. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So, October 2001, man, I got this awesome opportunity to uh, lead um, some great airmen uh, over into Uzbekistan and set up uh, some CSAR operations with our Task Force 160th brother. And, and man, we were going to cover the northern hemisphere of Afghanistan, the, you know, the, the most dangerous area, the mountains. Hey, what if one of our pilots goes down? How are we going to get them? So teamed with some great pararescue men, some great leaders, uh, got over there, opened up the airfield in Uzbekistan at K2 with our mighty 6 SOS because they are already in country during 9-11, training some of the Uzbeks over there. So it just worked out great that we were able to establish this airfield. And uh, things happened. Uh, we started getting some more intel, and we started seeing what our agency counterparts wanted to do uh, with the Northern Alliance. And uh, we went to an unconventional warfare set. And we had never really done that before in our, in our history of SOF. We did it on real small scale, but not into the point where we, we did some uh, kinetic operations into a, into a country. But man, everybody was pissed. Who, who, who here served during 9-11? Raise your hand. Who came in after 9-11? Raise your hand. Well, man, you joined during a time of war, so thank you for your service. Man, that is dedication. That is motivation to come into the military during a time of war and still continue to serve. And my 30 years, I got to serve half of that in war, in combat. Um, so hats off to all of you. But, man, we were pissed. We were really pissed after 9-11. We didn't know what we were going to do or how we were going to do it, but man, we just knew we were going to go somewhere and we were going to kick some ass. And through the great leadership of General Holland, man, we got that chance. We got that opportunity to go kick some ass. And so my bosses, kind of like today, you know, hey, Charlie and Mike, you're going to be the first one in the shoot. You're going to go out with ODA 555. And man, again, in soft, we have such a small connection with people. Man, the team sergeant was my swim team buddy in 1992 going through the combat divers course. We were swim team one. In fact, when I stepped into isolation with the 10, he's like, hey, there's a guy that drugged me through the water all those six weeks at combat dive school. The foxtrot on the team, I had been to Halo school with him. One of the medics on the team was right near from my hometown, and we had gone through another course together. 
So the people that you meet and soften, the people that you live and breathe and sweat and bleed and just cover the suck, man, those are the people you want around you because you surround yourself with smart people at all times, and man, they'll make you better. So we get to do this VTC with General Tommy Franks, U.S. CENTCOM commander at the time, and uh, he talks to our team about, hey, I don't know whether to be envious of you guys being the first ones to go in Afghanistan or, man, to be sorry for you and have those letters ready for your significant others because this is a suicide mission. We don't know what we're going to put you into. We know that the mighty men and women of Task Force 160th are going to get you there. But, man, we don't know what's going to happen after that. And so I was kind of looking around. I was like, well, hey, boss, there's, there's some younger guys that, you know, I've, I've gotten to do some pretty cool stuff, but if you want to send one of these guys first. <laughs> and so I kind of feel like that today. I feel like I'm the first one into the, you know, into the lion's den to, to face you guys <laughs> and, and show you what, man, show you what you got for you this week. And so, again, I'm truly humbled. I truly appreciate the opportunity to be here. I by no means think that I should be here. In fact, when I got the letter from the commandant, I thought it was a joke. I was like, <laughs> all right, who put, who put them up to this? Like they, got, they obviously got the wrong person. They probably meant Chief Master Sergeant Bill Turner, William Turner. Man, that is a true leader. That is a true man. That is a true Chief Master Sergeant, one of my mentors, one of my best friends. So it's very humbling when you get that letter to be honored to be part of this group to be a part of these great Americans who have done such great things. And man, and you just have one little piece, one little piece of that pie, maybe for a second, maybe for a day, you know. But man, I don't think it's all about the actions on the battlefield that get you where you need to go. One thing you will learn here, and one thing that you have learned, and one thing that you will know for the rest of your career, is man, you gotta lead. Because we have hungry airmen. We have hungry airmen that want to be led. And the second that you don't lead them, officer or enlisted, civilian or contractor, the second that you don't lead them, they will know it. One of our great leaders said, credibility equals freedom of, freedom of maneuver. The second you don't lead them, or the second that you don't follow, because followership equals good leadership, the second that you don't do that, your credibility is blown. And you may get another chance. You may get another chance to lead them, or to follow them or be part of that team. But if you don't, then you're done. And there's no room for that because we have hungry airmen that want to be led. And man, we leave it to you. No matter what position you're in, no matter what you do, you don't have to be soft to make a difference, trust me. It took me too long in my career to figure that out but you don't have to be soft to make a difference. Man, you just have to be a human. And being human <laughs> goes right back to our core. Man, being human, you can make a mistake. This shouldn't be a one mistake military. Because if it was, I wouldn't be standing in front of you today. I've been out a long time ago. Those pictures when I was a, didn't look anything like I could do now. <laughs> man, I'd have been gone a long time ago. So man, we are human, we err. But you gotta err on the side of self-reflection. How do I make myself better? And there's a couple easy ways, man. I'm going to break it down to you in five words. This is going to be the, the easiest leadership lesson you're ever going to get. And I didn't come here to give you a leadership lesson. Man, I came here to give you 
don't do what Charlie Mike took so long to learn, what Charlie Mike took so long to do. Because, man, you don't have that much time. Today is given. Today is given. Tomorrow isn't. You don't know if you'll be here tomorrow. And you've got to live your life and lead your career like that. Why are we all here today? Why? This is usually my chance to get down in the crowd and make somebody feel uncomfortable. And that's awesome. Because my job as a chief was to make people feel comfortable feeling uncomfortable. Why are we here today? Family? We want to be a part of something. We are a part of something. Man, we're here for the most beautiful reason ever. And I'll say it. Love. What do you love? Man, I love this beautiful lady right here. There's nothing more beautiful. And if you don't love that, you better find something else to do because I will find you. I'm serious. If you don't love that, find something else to do. And I'm, and I'm passionate about that. And passion equals love. Passion is an emotion, not one bit. You get emotional about something, you are no longer professional. But if you are passionate about something, you are professional all the way. And if you've worked with me, worked for me, or I've worked for you, you know that I am passionate. And man, that can, you can go to the man with that. You can stand on the carpet with that. But the moment that you're emotional, forget about it. You have lost all your professionalism. You have lost all your credibility. And man, it's hard to defend you. It's hard to have that conversation with you. But if you can be passionate and professional, man, you can take that all the way to the man. Five simple words. Five simple words equal that passion and that love. And man, it's all right to say it. I love you. General Holt, I love you. I've worked for this man, I've sweated for this man, and I've bled for this man. And I love him. Because you know why? I know he is next to me. He's to my left. He's to my right. And I can count on him. And I trust him with my life. And that's commitment. That's your first word. Commitment. Commitment. Look to the left and right of you right now. And if you don't trust that person with your life, man, you've got to hang out with some better people. <laughs> because you've got to have that. You've got to have that passion. You've got to have that commitment to what you do. You've got to have that commitment to her. Creativity. It's your second word. How many, how many of you are sick of hearing, well, we do it that way because that's the way we've always done it? I hate that. You, everybody hate that? Well, I mean, some things you've got to do because that's the way you've always done it. <laughs> I got that. But I'm not the smartest person, and I did a good job of surrounding myself with smart people. But man, I'll tell you what, I am creative. And so many times I got, no, Charlie and Mike, we can't do that. Why not? Well, I don't know why. Well, then let's find a way to do it. What is your creativity level? How many have a bunch of friends on Facebook? Like a lot. Nobody? Good. Because then you have no creativity because you don't get out in front of people and you don't talk to them, you don't engage them. 
You don't get their ideas. How many people are afraid to take somebody else's good idea, a great idea, and take it up the leadership chain? They go, man, this airman, this lieutenant came up with this idea. Holy cow. They're knocking it off the rocks. If you are afraid to surround yourself with smart people and creative people, you're going to lose. If you walk into a room and you think you're the smartest person in the room and you have to prove it, you've already lost. Because I'm telling you, our generation coming up behind us, your young airmen, your young officers, they're smarter than us, believe it or not. They're smarter than us. I was the exception. I was not smarter than anybody coming up. So I did a good job of finding that creativity. Find it within you. Find the way to yes. Trust. It's your third word. Do you trust your leadership? Do you? Man, that's a tough question. You've seen a lot of our leadership fired throughout the years. Probably more in my last 10 years of active duty, I've never seen more commanders relieved of duty. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you this. It's because they didn't have commitment from their people, they didn't take the creativity of their people, and they didn't trust their people. And that leads to a toxic environment. And man, that's when it's time to say, yep, I gotta let you go. And it's happened with a lot of chiefs, it's happened with a lot of senior NCOs, it's happened with our junior officers. But man, you gotta have trust. Sir, did those mighty men and women in the back of your planes, did they trust you to get, you, get them where you needed to get them to conduct operations on the enemy? you damn right they did. And would they do it again? Hell yes. If you don't have trust, you don't have anything. If you don't trust in her, if you don't love her, you have nothing. Fourth word, maturity. Is the oldest person in the room always the most mature? No. If I'm the oldest person in the room, I will tell you right away I am not the most mature. Look at our young lieutenants. Look at our young airmen coming in. When we were young airmen and we were young lieutenants, and this group right here can say it, man, they, were, they would say we weren't very mature. And when they were young lieutenants and young airmen, their leadership and their superiors probably said the same thing. Man, get over that. Find those mature individuals and mentor them, lead them, empower them. Man, because they're going to come up through the ranks and they're going to be sitting where you are today. And one of them, through the grace of God or a raffle ticket, is going to be standing on this stage talking about what they learned, who their mentors were, why they're here. Man, you got to have trust in that. You got to have trust in your leadership. When my commander, Colonel Pat Piana, and my DO, Colonel Kirk Buller, man, decided that I was going to be the first airman to be attached to an ODA team to go into Afghanistan and conduct 
kinetic operations which hadn't been done since Vietnam on our enemy? Do you think they trusted me? I hope so. I trusted them. I trusted them so much that they were making the right decision that I refused to write that old shit letter to my significant other. I refused that I was not going to come back from that operation. I refused that idea. And man, we fought hard. You don't take over the Bagram area and move into Kabul in 25 days because you, you know, you were easy on the enemy. Man, we were hard on the enemy. And I trusted everybody I was with. I was able to look to the left of me and to the right of me and say, I love you, man. I trust you with my life. I expect you to get me out of this when it time comes. And man, the last thing, expertise. You will never, ever be an expert at anything. And if you do, if you think that, man, do a self-evaluation. Because I'm here to tell you, you won't. But people around you, they are experts. They are committed. They have creativity. They trust you, you trust them. They're mature. And man, they're gonna help you through a situation. They're gonna help you rise to the top. And I don't mean the top of the rank. I don't mean the top of the food chain. But when you walk into a room, you have presence. That expertise is gonna help you win a battle. That expertise is gonna help you get a TO an OI, a regulation. Well, sir, chief, that's the way we do it because we've always done it. That expertise is going to help you change that for the better. That expertise is going to make life better for an airman. That expertise is going to defend this beautiful lady more than you know because you have surrounded yourself with fellow airmen, fellow soldiers fellow sailors and fellow marines that expertise is why we're all here Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I appreciate your time today. I think we have some time for uh, some questions. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any of them. But remember, my job is to make you comfortable being uncomfortable. Sir, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Folks, anything? Yes. <laughs> Thank you.